What you have are e experts at getting your attention who pretend to be experts in fitness. But they're, what they're really experts at is marketing, using social media, how to get people's attention, how to get people clicks, and they're not experts in fitness. So you're you're getting their, you're, you're following them because they're alluring, they're really smart, by the way, they're, they're the best. They're the best at getting views, they're the best at getting attention, that's Mastering what they're great the at. algorithms. So you're, you're giving them your attention, and then what you're doing is you're trying to absorb their information on fitness and health, which is terrible. All right, look, the fitness industry has got some great information, but it also has a lot, a lot of terrible information. In fact, probably a majority of the stuff you'll read from the fitness industry is bad. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about uh, the types of fitness influencers you should avoid. You should unfollow because the information you're getting from them is probably total garbage. Oh, wow. Snake oil. Yeah, I know. Wow. This is important because... Um, unfortunately, the, the the people that tend to get the most eyes and the most follows in our space also tend to provide some of the worst uh, mm. information. And this is this is just most of the time. Yes, this was a struggle for us. This is why we. I mean, this was the the main impetus for Mind Pump was uh, to counter some of this and to beat them at their own game to try and be more entertaining to try and reach more people. But man, it feels like an uphill battle because they're really good at getting eyes. They're really good at getting attention. Okay, before you go, we've been in this now for eight years. Is it getting better or worse? Oh, God, that's tough. That is a tough one. I think, I think some people have been caught and have been, um, I guess they've felt sort of the, the ramifications of it. And we've seen this by... Um, people running some coaching businesses alongside that weren't really qualified to coach. And mm -hmm. so you've seen like some examples out there of like you thought would deter uh, these types of people from running the same game, but I don't see it stopping at all. I don't, I don't think so either. I think uh, it's accelerated. Maybe the, you know, influencers have got more crafty, but I think even someone like what we just saw recently with the liver King is a good example of why it won't get better anytime soon. Because I mean, I think he's grown since yeah. his whole thing. Has I mean, he people, so. people reward bad behavior like that. And it's, it's, it's our fault. Yeah. And he, it doesn't, and it doesn't really, it, if you, it, it seems as though if you can get big enough that even with the bad you know, publicity that comes out or getting caught or getting busted or whatever, you still can have a viable business afterwards. And so I don't know, I don't know if it's going to get better anytime soon. I'm, you know, I, I feel hopeful sometimes. Sometimes I feel like exactly what you're saying. You know, there's that meme, there's this one meme, it's just human behavior, right? There's this one meme that shows like there's these two doors and one door says uh, comfortable lies and the other mm -hmm. door says uncomfortable truths. And the comfortable lies one has like a line that's like going out the door. Yeah. And nobody is waiting at the uncomfortable truths. And with fitness, the uphill battle is you're telling people who are trying to, you know, lose 20 pounds or improve their health and fitness. And you're going to say stuff like, hey, look, it's this is a lifelong journey. You're going to have to really change your lifestyle and behaviors. Mm -hmm. This has a lot more to do with the relationship you have with yourself and nutrition. And there isn't no specific answer. There's some general guidelines, but you got to kind of work through this and figure it out for yourself or works for you. And we're saying that, and we're competing with the person that's like, you know, bing, bing, boom, 30 days, lose 30 pounds, take this pill, you know, <laughs> look at me, I'm hot or whatever. Yeah. That is hard, man. That it's is really, really or, you know, look at these before and afters and look at, you know, look, look at Mrs. Johnson who did all this great stuff in, in two weeks. Well, and two, it was tough. another thing I was kind of noticing. So Yes, I think maybe in the platforms that we hang out in, like, um, like so for instance, Instagram, I think that there's been maybe a little bit of a decline, but the, it's even worse on a platform like TikTok where the it's shorter form. It's yeah. very quick. Like there's no fact checking. There's no referencing. It's just like uh, they could just say whatever they want. And, and if it's uh, compelling enough in the way they deliver it and they're handsome or, you know, fit and, and healthy looking, then that's all the authority they need. So TikTok is another reason why I think it's actually getting worse. It's to that, your exact point like that is like, even if we saw maybe a little bit of a correction starting to happen in Instagram and Facebook, well, just in that time, Boom, TikTok, TikTok has yeah. exploded. Oh, we'll just go over here. And I, I don't think I've heard anybody who is a, a, like a, a good fitness uh, enthusiast or influencer in the space 
uh, recommend TikTok as a great source, yet it's being used and shared and followed by millions of people. And so, yeah, I, I think we're, Dude, we're getting worse before so we're getting better. I just this morning listened to this guy. I don't know who he was. I was uh, it was a short talk, but he made this compelling argument. And he said, in the past, when you created products for kids, you had to appeal to their parents first because they would just shut the TV off or they wouldn't mm. buy the product. Mm -hmm. He said, for the first time in history, you are appealing directly to the kids because they're on TikTok, they're on social media. You don't have to appeal to the parents whatsoever. And so he said, you know, and this, I guess he worked in tech because he goes, and I'm in these meetings and all these conversations with these tech uh, executives is how can we get more kids to like our stuff versus 30 years ago, which was, how can we get the parents to let their kids watch the stuff? Or we can, how can we get the parents to buy their kids this kind of stuff? Yeah. So Such an interesting point. A big difference. Interesting point, right? Yeah. And you might be right. I think generally there's more information. So I think that there's still more good information, but I think that the bad information has also grown probably faster. Yeah. So the proportion's probably worse. I think you could find good information easier. Like if I go through social media, I'm seeing really good posts on, but I see, then again, I, you know, I help modify my feed, right? Mm -hmm. I'll see posts on correct form, biomechanics, technique, that kind of stuff, which I would, I don't think, I think would have been hard to find. That's before. why. Okay. So to what you're saying, what you're alluding to right now is the reason why it's getting worse is because you, all it takes is you to start clicking on those quick fixes, the pills, all the things like that. And now you're getting bombarded More with it. them. And so yep. unless you go out of your way to seek the information that says, hey, this is going to be hard. Hey, this is going to take a long time. Hey, it's not that easy. Hey, it's gonna, you're going to need all, yeah. all the, you're like, you got to enjoy the work. Let's be honest, who is doing that? Yeah. You know, especially on a platform like that, that's that short and catchy and, and, and uh, a larger population of the users are very young. So, yeah, I think what you're experiencing is your own bias of, content that because you make the active choice to go and seek that stuff yep. all right today's workout program giveaway maps split this is an advanced bodybuilding workout program here's how you can enter to win leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode subscribe to this channel turn on notifications do all of those things if we like your comment uh we'll pick you in the comment section we'll let you know that you won free access to map split also we got a sale going on this month this is actually one of the biggest sales of the year because it's the new year. We put together three workout program bundles. Each one of them gives you up to nine months of planned workouts, nine months of demos, videos, exercise, you know, workouts, everything. Okay. All planned out for you. Here's what the three bundles are. And by the way, with each one, you save over $300. The first one is the new to weightlifting bundle. The second one is the body transformation bundle. And, this, and the third one is the new year extreme intensity bundle. So if you're interested in learning more, or you just want to sign up, Click on the link at the top of the description below to get set up. All right, here comes the show. What you have are e experts at gaining your attention who pretend to be experts in fitness. But they're, what they're really experts at is marketing, using social media, how to get people's attention, how to get people clicks. And they're not experts in fitness. So you're, you're getting their, you're, you're following them because they're alluring. They're really mm -hmm. smart, by the way. They're, they're the best. They're the best at getting views. They're the best at getting attention. That's Mastering what they're great the at. algorithms. So you're, you're giving them your attention. And then what you're doing is you're trying to absorb their information on fitness and health, which is terrible. So I think rather than, because we do this on all of our podcasts, right? Almost every episode is we're trying to present good information, trying to spell bad information. But I think with this episode, what we can do is talk generally about the kind of influencer that's probably going to give you bad information. So regardless of whatever they're presenting to you, if you're one of these kind of people, then you're probably going to get, they're probably giving you. Okay. Fire. What's your first one? Uh, fake authentics. Oh yeah. Uh, so yes. one, I want that one. So <laughs> one way that, um, and, and people will, well, they teach this in sales classes all the time. One way to get people to open up and accept your influence, right. Or, or hear what you have to say and sell is for that person to believe yeah. that you're authentic you want to get them emotionally involved. Yeah. You, you, if you believe someone sitting across from you is real, then you're more likely to believe them and trust them. Okay. So what do I mean by fake authentic? Faith, fake authentic are people who use social media to, and what they do is they present what, what's called fake vulnerability. But the way you can sniff them out is say to yourself, 
for example, I'll give I'll use a good example. Like the, the, the people who cry on, on their social media posts, like, Oh, I'm so sad. Ugh, here's and what by happened. the way, I'm yeah, having a terrible day. Yeah. But by the way, I want to make sure I cover your ass here. Cause you're not saying just like anybody who starts crying no. on social media. It's somebody who is actually like picks their phone up and is recording is, it. Right. And then posting not somebody it. who's been talking on their live story for 15 minutes and they get to Someone a Someone hits them with the store. Yeah. With yeah the or question. they get to a part where they share some childhood trauma or something. And then you see it comes up naturally. Yeah, it comes up. In that, yeah. It's the, it's the person who, you know, is already crying and grabs the phone. Yes. And then, and or even them. a picture. I've even seen where just a picture of the person yeah. who's like, I had a terrible day. Mascara. Today. Just right yeah. I struggle with food issues just like you. Here's a picture of me struggling with food issues or here's a picture of me, whatever. <laughs> And it's fake because for the app, for the real person, when you're like that, the last thing you want to do is post a picture of yourself to a bunch of people you don't know, like your, your followers or whatever. It's hard to do it enough. It's hard enough to do it with the people you're close to, let alone your followers or whatever. So the reason why they're doing this is to gain your trust because now you're like, oh, this person is so real. Like, yeah. oh my God, they're crying mm -hmm. or, you know, or look at her. She posted a picture of her period blood because it went through her pants and oh my God, it's so embarrassing. Like who the hell posts a picture of that right. and uses that as a way to, so these fake authentic people, really what they're doing is they're using an effective strategy of appearing to be real so they gain your trust, they can sell you bullshit. And, mm -hmm. uh, and and you see this all over our space. I mean, I would include like, uh, you know, fake naturals in that category too, is yes. people that uh, are, you know, pretending to be uh, all natural and saying that they don't take any like the liver king and people that have gone out there and, you know, been so staunch about, I've never touched steroids in their life. And you're like, come on, yeah. dude. And then yes. it comes out. Complete that they, liars. Yeah, right. total liars. And uh, when, it, you know, it, when it, it's, that's again, that's again, fake authentics. And the information you're going to get from them is, almost always going to be total garbage and geared really just around. To and Hey, get even if they, okay, listen, even if they are giving good advice that says something about somebody's character yep. and, and is, is that somebody you really want to be following or so you know, really contributing money, yeah. contributing money towards like, so just keep that in mind that if somebody has that type of character, even if they might have some good fitness advice, I don't, I don't even think that you you have to take it that far. It's just that what does this say about somebody's character that's willing to uh, manipulate other people like this in order to gain your attention or gain money from you and stuff like that? So I would just be weary of that. Yeah. So basically my point is if they're willing to go that far, uh, you probably can't trust them and trust what they're selling you or yeah. their information. Okay. So this is a really old one. But um, I mean, really, the old standard used to be like, uh, I'm not going to listen to anybody uh, unless they're they look like a superhero and mm. their body is just like oh. out of control. It's like all physique. That's all I care about. So they obviously know what they're talking about. Oh, you mean people who just use their body to sell? Just use it to sell. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably a majority. I would say. Wouldn't you guys agree that would be a majority of the terrible influencers in fitness are the the body sellers? Yeah. Well, I mean, this is a tough one, right? Because I think that. This is an old, to your point, proven formula. Yeah, look at and me. and then there and there's a little bit of this like, you know, consumers will say things like, "Well, I, I'm not going to hire somebody who doesn't look better than me." Sure, and right. so I think it's perpetuated by not only what the the trainer thinks is the right way to do it, but also what the consumer is seeking and looking for. So this is a this is a tough one. I agree with this. But it's also like, I think a lot of trainers fall in this trap, not knowing any better, thinking that this is the way to so do it. So I yeah. can see some value in posting the occasional workout or whatever, because you want to kind of walk the walk. Like I get that. Yeah. I'm taught, I, I would say this is more like, this is all they do. Yeah. Every post is flexing or look at my butt or look how hot I am or look at me in a bikini it's like this is how they build There's all the no values. education really wrapped in with that. It's the, they're selling their um, authority through how they look primarily. It's about how I look, yeah. therefore buy my stuff. And I hate to say it, it's super, super, super effective. Like yeah, if you I have look, no problem with. I mean, like just consider yourself a model. Like don't don't consider yourself a coach. Like that's where I get annoyed because well, it's I, like you don't have the background to to promote yourself. That I, way. I think the point that Sal makes is really good because I, I do think that like if you got a if you got a page, you follow a page of a, a fitness influencer trainer, and you know seventy five percent of the content on there is you know talking about macros or teaching about science yes. or 
the new cutting drug that came out and the pros and cons of it or addressing all like, and, the, and then, it, oh, and this is my, you know, before and after of this last thing that I did, or here's this, the transformation photo of before I started working out and training and right. dieting. And so, so I think that utilizing that is one thing. And then I think it's different if like, you know, to what I think Justin's alluding to is like a page where it's just like, it, you literally, if you didn't, if you didn't read any caption and know anything, you would think that they're a, a model. Mm -hmm. You know, all half half nude pictures or they're all nothing of the dude's abs and shirts off and every single thing. And then it's like every single photo is dedicated to that to to make his so, page more alluring. And, and to hers. be very clear, yeah, like, when, like shreds. and to be very clear, when somebody looks like like incredible, right, when they look like super shredded, super fit. The evidence that you get from that is that they know how to get themselves there. There is no evidence whatsoever from that help you. that they could do that for anyone else. Right. Not only that, but you don't know how they got there. Um, this is very true. It's a true statement. We've probably said it at least a uh, hundred times, which is that in our space, you will see a greater percentage of people with eating disorders and body dysmorphia type issues in the fitness space than you, do, than you see in the average population. So what you don't know is that that girl or guy looks that way. And part mm -hmm. of the way they got that, that way was through dysfunction and poor health and maybe drug abuse or who knows, right? So that's the evidence that you're getting from that is they know how to get themselves to look that way. You don't know how they did it. And you definitely don't know that they know how to do this for anyone else. And the way that people respond is so different that uh, even if they did it the right way for themselves, they would have very little information on how to train or help coach a, a, a wide variety of now people. the caveat to that too though is like i'm i'm definitely not advocating to be like a sloppy coach and like let your body go to <laughs> shit you know it, it's definitely advantageous for you to be in good shape and, and walk the walk uh and i think that's completely you know valid and and it just you know accompanying that with solid information on top of like you know how you've been able to kind of create this physique you've you know you've gone through it just needs to 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 be a pair if you're going to call yourself a coach. Yeah, yeah totally. I, I have one. This one's a little nuanced. Uh, my way is the only way. Oh, yeah. And These what, are the camps. Right. right. Yeah. Tend to be camps. You get this with, uh, especially in the in the diet world a lot where, and, and part of the strategy is to demonize all the other sides, right? Their way of training. This is why it's ter it's all terrible. It's why you have to do mine or, oh, it's the, 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 this diet the, oh, I can't believe people eat this yeah. way. It's so bad. That's why you need to eat this way that I, I'm talking about. And so this idea of that, it's, <laughs> it's my way is the superior. My camp is better than yours. Right. And so I think to be, be cautious of that influencer that's promoting. And by the way, it's a very strong strategy. I had somebody who did I hear that was breaking down all the things that why liver King was so successful. And one of those was how he communicates to uh, there's primal. He makes you very exclusive, right. To be a part of their group. Yeah. Like you're part of the primals. Primal. If you do these things and you're, you're sub primal, if, sub -primal. if you don't, so it's mm -hmm. a little, you're literally, you're less than right. You're, <laughs> if, you're if you're in my, if you're in my group and you, you align yeah. with me, you're, you're part it's of like the in crowd. Yeah. Everybody else is out is sub sub primal yeah. to, to what we well, the, do. The reason why this normies. Is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, normies. <laughs> the reason why this is, uh, I would say this one's a bad one is because, um, the nuances, <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. yeah. but also just the, the nuances and variability from person to person when it comes to, I mean, there are general truths, so don't get me wrong, but when you get down to the specifics, Man, is it different from person to person? I'll, I'll give you a silly example, right? So um, I could very easily, and I make this argument all the time, that strength training is a, the superior form of exercise when it comes to fat loss, superior to any other form of exercise. Okay. Does that mean it's true for everybody? No, it doesn't mean it's true for everybody. Now, it, it, physiologically, it's true. I could, I could make that argument. But in a real world, it's not always true because... If John over here hates strength training, can't stand strength training, never wants to do strength and just loves to swim, well, guess what? Swimming is the best form of exercise for him for fat loss. That's just one extreme example of nuance, but it goes so far, like machines versus free weights, bodybuilding versus powerlifting versus weightlifting, circuit training versus long rest periods, right? Uh, keto versus paleo versus carnivore versus vegan. I can see 
value in almost every single one of these and apply that value depending on the situation. And again, the nuances that you find with individuals, I can take each one of those things and see how there may be potential value depending on the person that I'm talking to. By the way, the person you'll never find that'll say that it's that rigid with my way is the only way, the person you'll almost never see that way is a coach who's been training lots of people for the last you know decade or two. Yeah. They will almost never be that way because, by the way, most trainers start out this way. Most yeah. trainers and coaches start out with my way is the only way, but they stay with it 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and they keep getting slapped in the face with, boy, people are different, and this doesn't always work And for by everybody. the way, they, I, I think it's rare that you actually hear them communicate it that way. That's like, oh, my way is the only way. It's just the way they present their their message around how to train, how to diet. It becomes very much so one way. And that they may not be saying that like my way is the only way, but the way they promote They're their so message. They're so passionate about yeah their methods that it, it overshadows like that. There's probably other things out there that they still are unaware of. They need to educate themselves further. I think that the biggest red flag is that they're not continually educating themselves and be remaining a student. Uh, and so this is something that I always pick up on if like somebody's speaking with that much authority and you realize they don't even know all these other methods yeah. uh, that I would present. Well, yeah. that's, if you were going to follow someone like this, then I would actively seek out all the other people that are zealots about their thing. So I have at least very, a, very good. Right. So let's yeah. say I'm yes. like the hardcore carnivore guy that this is the only way to eat and it's superior. Then I'm gonna go get me a vegan guy who feels the same yes. way about veganism. I'm gonna get and me listen a, to the points, right. Yep. And listen to the points. Totally. So if you are going to follow someone like this, uh, be cautious and make sure that you're also following somebody that completely disagrees with that all person. the extremes in the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Like, so balance it that so way. you get it. I mean, I do this like with, uh, like real estate. I love following like a, a Dave Ramsey and a Robert Kiyosaki. Like they completely disagree yeah. about investing and you t tend to have camps. Either you're a Kiyosaki guy or you're a Ramsey guy and they talk shit to I follow both because I like to hear. And there's some truth in both. There is some truth in both. And I think that's what that's important to take away as the consumer or the person following these people is that we're not saying that somebody that is is presenting this message can't be right sometimes. I mean, they're going to be right sometimes because they're going to be individuals where that diet or that thing is life changing for them. But for yeah. you as a consumer, I think it's smart for you to be, you be balanced with the content you're consuming by making sure that you you have someone's counter. You, you know that. why that's so brilliant? What you just said, Adam, is because no one is going to explain and sell like carnivore diet better than the, a carnivore zealot. Right. And no one is going to explain and sell veganism better than a a vegan you know maniac. So it's a great way to get, you know, that kind of information. A good coach will will almost always answer, I'd say 80% of the questions that you ask them when it comes to fitness and health by saying this, it depends. Yeah. If you ask a coach or trainer, hey, is this the best exercise for that? Or what about this food? Is this good for that? Or what about this diet for that? And they answer and they say, well, it depends. That's when you know you've got somebody who's got some experience working with lots of different people and understands that there's not always... That there's a lot of gray. There's a lot of gray when it comes to, to health and fitness. Yeah. All right, I got one. And I know all of us get really turned off by this category because it's super popular in our space. And it's the the hype, the beast mode, the motivation is everything <clears throat> pages. The ones that are like, Just get up, make it, it happen, make kick, you know, kick ass, Come you know, through. shut up, you know, you're yeah. be tubby, a beast Eat, mode. Sleep, crush. train, repeat. Yes, you know, you'll, you can sleep when you die type of deal. That was something that I that super resonated with me when I was young and full of energy and really didn't know any better. But then as I became a coach and trainer, I realized just how terrible of a message this was because although I was very effective at getting people motivated, nobody could possibly stay motivated all the time. And I would get this drop off weight, weight rate with clients. This is one that stop. if whenever I talk, I always get pushback about this. Because there's always people, well, people that, love it. that uh, cause you do it is, it's, it's very it. addicting. Yeah. The the feel the temporary feeling that you get when you watch these videos or you follow these types of people, like there literally is a something chemically happening inside of you when you hear yep. them present that message. And you have to learn to recognize that there's a part of you that's attracted and sometimes addicted to that feeling. And it's not very useful as far as you getting to your goals. And so whenever I talk about this one, I always get a flood of DMs of people that instantly get offended because the, most of their feed are these 
motivational hype beast mode type of personalities that they're drawn to. And the reality is that they fall in that category of the off and on people. And they are convinced that these people are useful to have in their life because they re- they always recall the moments when they were motivated. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, oh, I watched what's his face, and man, I you know I wasn't even gonna go to the gym that day, and I got up and I went because of that. And so they they attach like because I follow him I, I, that one time I went to the gym or they, they got me to go do this, and they don't realize that when you look at your life in a in a more like a five or a ten year snapshot. You know, has it really helped? You've been yeah. following that shit for 20 years, you know, following, yeah. listening to those things. Well, and- we grew up with G.I. Joe, you know, <laughs> and it's like, you know, you always thought of yourself as this badass, like, ah, like I always look up to like these like crazy military guys, like people that are like actually going out to get shot and like killed. Yeah. And so it's like, that's a completely different thing. And it's weird that we associate that with like a workout, you know, it's like, it, it makes sense to be like mentally disciplined to a degree that like, you know, you have to just barrel through any challenge your way and like, but it's, you're not, you're just surviving. And and that's the thing. That's the difference. Like there's like in terms of like working out and training, uh, we have to look at it differently because it has to be a lifelong yes. uh, pursuit. It has to be a daily activity. So <laughs> to, to have that kind of like pain is just weakness, leave my body. Like I have to just always be like this. Uh, is just unreasonable. Well, it's the, unreasonable because you're going to, if you look at the your life, okay, you're going to have periods where you're happy, sad, stressed, motivated, energized, tired, sick, weak. You got to be able to figure out how to use health and fitness to improve the quality of your life through all of those, not just the motivated, energetic states of mind and trying to constantly keep yourself in an energetic, motivated state of mind, not only denies the value, by the way, of all those other states of mind, there's value in all of those, by the way. There's a reason why we experience all those emotions. Not only does it deny that value, but you're going to burn yourself out and you are going to eventually completely stop because you've fallen in love with the feeling. And once that feeling's gone, you don't know what to do. You don't know how to there, continue. These influencers are glorified drug dealers. <laughs> they're they're, so they're right. giving you the adrenaline. They're, they're giving yeah. you hits. And you're and you're and you love it, and you keep coming back for it, and you think they they care about you. Adrenaline, dopamine. You th- ah, you ah, think ah. that they they really care about you, and they don't. They have just found a way to trickle you a little bit of drugs to keep you coming back all the time because it is all hype. And you know another reason why I don't like it is because it 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 causes people to overcorrect. Yeah, you go from being super lazy, not doing anything. And then you get the guy yelling in your ear about what a wuss you are and that you got to go kill it and crush it and run this far and do this and beat your body. Like, and then you go and you do that. And, and then you think you're doing a good job because you made it through that week of punishing yourself. And it's like, that is such a terrible way to approach changing behaviors in your life. If you truly want to get to this new you know, found version of yourself that's much healthier and balanced and consistent that this approach of all out or, you know, adding all this or doing it until you you, you can't walk anymore type of mentality is not going to lead to better behaviors. Even if it temporarily does, it will eventually collapse. Yep. And so I, this one, I'm always passionate about when we talk about it. And I always get pushed back because mm-hmm. there's people that are unaware of how addicted to it that they well, are. The truth is all yeah. of us, all of us were this guy when we first started out in the space, 100%. all of us were, I sold training through hype and motivation. And it was very effective. Here's the irony. Later on, Doug is a great example. Doug hired me, very willing to hire me for like four or five workouts a week. I could have totally got him to hire me for four or five workouts a week. This is what he had done before. And I told him, no, 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 we're only going to work out twice a week. Doug's such a sucker. Yeah, no, no. (laughs) My point is he was ready. He was hyped. He was motivated. He'd done this before. My point is when I adopted a different strategy, Clients stayed with me much longer and developed these lifelong uh, skills where they 
now had this relationship with exercise and nutrition that stuck with them forever. The other strategy was exactly what happened. What you said, Adam, World. I'd get them so hyped and psyched and they're with me for six months and then poof, dude, gone. same. And then like what you realize is when you can get them to call you and schedule an appointment when they're not feeling good That's and when, when they're you know. in pain, now you're, you're really making progress with that person. Totally. All right. Yeah. So here's another one. It sounds similar to the, my way is the only way this is different. This is the, these are the zealots. And, and what I'm, what I mean by zealots are people who are zealots about a specific category. For example, the science zealots. If there's no data and there's no studies, then uh, I'm not going to even yeah, Whatever you're doing it. is irrelevant. Right. Or the natural zealots. Hey, if it's all natural, then it must be healthy. If it comes from the earth, then it's totally fine, right? Or the hypertrophy zealots. Well, this builds, this is a hypertrophy exercise. It stimulates the muscle the most. Yeah. All that other stuff has no value type of deal. Hard stuff's worth where it. Do yeah. the, where do the ayahuasca chasers go? Do they yeah. fall in this category? Oh, They're in the yeah. natural yeah. section. Yeah, okay. psychedelic Maybe. zealots. Because yeah, yeah, it, it grew uh, from the plant. Yeah. Spiritual, what do they call it? Uh, spiritual junkies. Yeah, yeah or whatever. Yeah, like you know, yeah. spiritual junkies. Kind of zealots or whatever. Yeah. This is, this is uh, bad because they don't consider that there may be value in other areas. For example, the science zealots, science is extremely valuable, double blind, placebo controlled studies, extremely valuable. But there's, you know, there are products, uh, or should I say, like herbs and plants and methods that have been around for thousands of years that just maybe don't have studies on them that have been around for thousands of years that have thousands of years of anecdote and culture behind them. To say that there's no truth behind something that's lasted for 3,000 years, this herb that's been used for you know, fertility for 3000 years or this, you know, method that's been used for a thousand years. Like to say there's no value there just because there's no studies behind it is silly. Same thing with the natural people. It's like, well, it's all natural. Therefore it's healthy. You know, it's funny about this. It was, what was it like uh, three years ago, four years ago when they came out with that study on, on uh, vegan protein powders and they found the highest heavy metal content in organic plant proteins because of the organic pesticides that they use. Yeah. Hmm. So um, you got to be careful with some of the stuff. And these are the people, like I said, they just, they, they worship their area. They have their horse blinders on. Totally. They're, they're totally. completely myopic in, I mean, that's dangerous place to be because uh, you just smell your own farts and, and hope for the best. Yeah. So how about, um, algorithm chasers. Oh yeah. The, this in, is a, this is it now. The this influencer is the who is constantly hopping from platform to platform is on what the, the latest way to get more views and likes and they use and do any gimmick they can to drive the algorithm and get more attention. Like, you know, they, it's, you know, they it's only just, post people that are as big or bigger than they yeah. are. So they can get the, the flood of never posting it. You know, yep. I remember when I was chasing uh, the clout. I remember when we we first started meeting people like this and like how quickly I was because I, I think we're those people that have met us in person. I think one of the, the best compliments we ever get is that man, you guys are exactly how you are on the show. And I said, yeah, I think everybody is is pretty authentic. And remember how weird that was to hear the first time? Yeah, yeah. Like, what would like, you like, expect? Big deal. Why is there yeah. people not like that? That's exactly <laughs> how it was, right? And and obviously as we you know, stayed in the space longer and time went on and, and we met more and more, you know, influential people in the space. It was really unfortunate to see how many people were, were really fake that, that it was always about the algorithm or, you know, what, what will connecting or doing something together will do for them to get them better. And it's just like, it's such a, it's such a sad way. And it's, believe it or not, even if they, these people have success and they're doing well for themselves, it's not a good long, long, long-term strategy. Like, you know, I, I think of like the, the Dr. Brinks, the Jordan Shallows, the Ben Pollocks, the, um, um, who else of our, our friends that, you know, even Danny Mantrega is that these people that nobody knew about that they didn't have any real social media presence within that. And the reason why we hung out, befriended them, put them on our platform when we were much bigger than any of them were, was not because of any sort of clout or caring. What can you do for us? It's that this person has genuine good information to provide. Therefore, we're going to present them regardless if it does anything for us. And these people that chase these algorithms, that's not how they think. No, they think first. How will this gain me more attention? The the the, the side the idea of oh, are they presenting good information? Are they good people? Do they have integrity? That shit doesn't matter as much as oh, do they have a million followers and I only have five hundred thousand? Like now, I'll, I'll fuck with them. You yeah, know? you know it's a red yeah. flag along these lines is uh, news hacking. 
or well, they'll post uh, a video of someone saying something, they're reacting to it, and then they comment on it. And what they're doing is they're picking a viral video. And this, if this is a majority of their information, it's an al- this is an algorithm mm-hmm. chaser because it's a very effective way to you get pop views. Up in the search results almost immediately. All, like if there's something that goes viral, someone says something goes viral, and then they immediately post a reaction video and a counter to it. Or they constantly are going after people that are big to to criticize them. And right. that's pretty much all they do. Yeah, they're, they're just always attacking people. Yes. I see that a lot. This is this is strategy. because it gets lots of, I mean, it, we see it. Like if we ever talk about somebody, and we've done this before, we see the views, we see the attention that it provides. It's a yeah. very easy, cheap way to get a lot of attention. Yeah, but talk about, because I know there's, there's, there's entrepreneurs, there's fitness trainers that are trying to build their business that are going like, yeah, but you guys, isn't that the way to grow your social media and how do I do that with integrity, but then also do it. You know, yesterday I ran the, uh, the mind put media page and I asked uh, a, a lot of business questions or I let the audience ask a lot of business questions. And one of the things that was common, I got a lot of questions around our social media platforms. Oh, which one's most profitable and which one drives the oh, most wow. revenue and you know, which one do you guys value? And it's like, I said, you know what? It's so crazy how, um, little social media actually plays. Now, social media is a broad general statement and you could probably put podcasting in there. So in that case, it, it's made, it's been a huge impact on our business. But when you think about Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, and, all, you know, and we're, we're active on all of those platforms, you could completely remove uh, any one of those and it would not financially impact the business. Not enough for us to even feel it or, or notice it. That's how insignificant mm-hmm. The, the growth of those those platforms. Now, that doesn't mean that it has not complemented the business. Yeah, or there's no value whatsoever. And there's no value in it. No, there's value in it. It supports a business. But I think that a lot of young entrepreneurs that are building uh, businesses right now overvalue uh, the, the following, having a massive following of people. And so they're, they're, their ideas of posting to hack the algorithm or to gain more followers is a losing battle because it doesn't really give you the ROI you think it's going to give you, especially if you're ever sacrificing your integrity. Yeah, plus, when you put all your eggs uh, in that basket, like uh, we've seen this with some friends, that the majority of their business is through Facebook, and then they change the algorithms overnight, and oh, yeah. they lose hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. Uh, and so it's just... It's not um, it's not all what it seems, uh, you know, to be able to own your own content and uh, have it out there and then have options. I think it's a good caddy to what we're doing, but it's not something that we're putting all our eggs in. Look, um, it's important to understand algorithms. It's, it's a part of the business and you're stupid if you ignore it. That being said, the old rules of business still apply. And for some reason, people think that because there's new ways to do business, that the old rules no longer apply. They still apply. You still need to provide tremendous value. You still still need to have a good product. And if you want staying power, you need to be honest and consistent. Those rules still apply. If all you do is chase the algorithm, you're not doing any one of those things. And you're going to find yourself flash in the pan or struggling or whatever. Um, but but the, the allure is it works initially at getting you a lot of views. And yeah, yeah. So we should have for sure. We should have had Andrew make like uh hashtags for each of these and then have people tag us on them when they see it. Oh, <laughs> like a uh, hashtag fake authentic and then have hashtag sells their body hashtag my way and like have people tag us when hashtag they come across zealot. these. Yeah. Well, he could still, he's going to still edit it and post yeah. them up as we, yeah, yeah. yeah. I so think that, I think that would be funny to, to th- see. That would be hilarious. Yeah. Look, if you like mind pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at MindPumpJustin. Adam is on Instagram at MindPumpAdam. And you can find me on Twitter at MindPumpSal. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of weak points and and areas that I struggled with developing for a a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 